so enamored with princess's gift her her writing is just it's it's unbelievable and and this is what the meet this the meet the author series is about it's about authors who are invested not just in the storytelling component or the storytelling art mm. you know just as as an isolated art but as this broadened perspective you know where we talk about education and how to bridge the gap for a lot of children we we know that imagination is currency yes and we have to incite our children to dream and imagine you know their their lives the lives of their families the lives of their community and right now with so much duress and so much you know change happening mm -hmm. we still need to have these conversations about how we how we empower imagination, how we empower, you know, learning as continuous learning. Um, so this all comes together in the Meet the, the Author series. And we're, again, super excited to talk to you, Princess. Like I said, we have so much to talk about. So I guess let's, let's just start. Let's just start. Let's think. Ola Rumi's Promise is, was not the first book. That was not your first book. That's That was not my first book uh, published um i i actually started writing at age 16 if you want me to go back to you know <laughs> to, to you know that far in saudi arabia and i didn't know what i was doing i just knew that i i was i used to have the urge to put down thoughts that were coming to my mind and um <clears throat> so i was in the university and my one of my uh literature professor Prince, um, her name is Professor Jane Shilanda. She was an American in the Middle East, you know. So she, so whenever she gave us assignments, and you know, I would, I would uh, uh, submit mine. Uh, so she called me to her office. She said, Sharifa, you know, you have the writing gift. I said, um, I, I really didn't know what she was really talking about for real, because I never imagined myself as a writer. I just knew that things, something was happening, but whenever I wrote things, I would hide them. <laughs> you know, my inner thoughts, I would hide them, you know. So she said, you know what? I'm going to make a writer out of you. And that was like the most profound statement I had ever heard, you know, from someone who is not my, my, um, my family member. So she said, you have the gift. So anyway, um, I finished two books while living in Saudi Arabia, two books. Uh, one was, both of them were handwritten. <laughs> so imagine <laughs> back then, both of them were handwritten. <clears throat> and the first one was typed out with a typewriter. And I remembered my neighbor used to knock on the door, on the wall. <laughs> Oh, at night because the of the typewriter would keep them awake <laughs> so they used to bang on the on the wall <laughs> so stop that. yeah stop that now. <laughs> i'm telling you yeah so the first one is called prejudice no more and um so i was close to this and publishing it before i relocated to united states so I had to withdraw it from the publisher in Nigeria and I had to pay all the money that they had in, you know, uh, invested in publishing it. They had done all the uh, editing and all the, you know, all the publishing work. So they had spent money. So I had to refund them with that. So I took it and I brought it to the U.S. with the hope of publishing it here where, where I would be. So the and I you know so that's a project that I put aside because I wanted to expand it you know when I gave it to editors here they said I needed to expand and explain the culture so the way I wrote it was for someone who was familiar with the culture with my culture so they said we need the information we need to know the context we need to know the background so that's why I put it in the parking lot. And the second one is a much larger um, project. And people who knew me when I got here um, in the writing community, they know about that book. It's called, um, I had two, two titles. And that's something that we can talk about with me. We might change the title. You know, it's uh, the first title was Tear Me Up. 
and the second title is love on the arabian sand you know okay so i do know the the love on Ar yeah, arabian i do know that yeah. one yeah so that's the big project that should be coming out you know um sometime in the near future but but um i've also published in obasi obasi is an african american um anthology of african american writers so i have uh, a story published there and a poem just one story and just one poem yes in that anthology it's, it's an anthology of all a lot of writers so you can yeah. put too many uh work by one author in there yeah yeah, so, I mean, the point in, in me just having you just share that is, you know, when we talk about the publishing being a lot of work, um, the writing is also, you know, though it may come, it may, though it may be effortless for us, it's still an experience and it's still something that has to happen. And, you know, over time, you, you have a catalog. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, it's just, it's just been fascinating. I remember when we first started talking about your bio. Mm hmm. I'm like, wow, you've done all of this writing and you're mm -hmm. you're a social worker, you know, and we're going to talk about that in a second because that all ties in, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it was just, it was just so shocking that you had written so much and that your work had been recognized and revered in so many places. And what you weren't new to, it wasn't like you were just, you know, like, hey, I'm going to write this story, and, you know, you weren't new to it. You were very well versed and you had the relationships and um, the storytelling, it, it's in your soul, you know, it's Thank in you. you. Thank you. So, yeah. So in this, yeah. uh, in, 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 uh, in response to that in Nigeria, a lot of my poems and uh, stories were published in newspapers. They, it was not monetized, but it was, you know, just for the exposure. So I had, uh, many work uh, published in, in newspapers and, uh, a lot of, um, uh, articles uh, were done in you know newsletters and you know in the United States and and uh, elsewhere. So yeah, yeah, global. Yes. That's what we like. <laughs> so we we know, and this is something that I I like to pride myself on uh, being, you know, the the developer or the founder of Imagery. Culture is very important mm -hmm. to me. It's always been very important to me. Um, and so when we talk about being a Nigerian author, mm -hmm. I want to talk about the background. I want to talk about Nigerian, your experiences with your Nigerian culture. Um, you know, when I say princess, it's no, she's a real princess. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk about that, but I want to talk about it in a way that, you know, that, that that you find valuable. What can you offer us about, you know, the history and the culture uh, and the dynasty and your family, your father, just all of it? <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, you know, when I uh, came to United States uh, over three decades ago, I found out that so many people were using the, the title prince and princesses, you know, you know, without really having the royal heritage, we all have royalty in us. You know, at some point, if you trace your your ancestry, you might find something there, right? And there are not. It's not only being Oba; it can be, you know, Oba is the king, being uh, Ijoye, uh, and and those are people who are um, who are like knights, who are who are chiefs, you know, of of a kingdom right so the reality is 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 wide and, f and far however uh my one of my uncles used to tell me that you know it is your birthright you didn't choose to be a princess it is your birthright and you must be proud of it so i never used to use princess you know in my name when i came here so because it was so used by everybody you know they just think if you are from africa oh were you a princess there or you a prince and they people would just use the title so i dropped it also back to nigeria my father was a diplomat you mentioned um you know that i should say a little bit about him um but he's from his father his is a paternal family 
is the royal family so they have this thing in nigeria in yoruba culture you can only be you can only really belong to that royal lineage if you is from the male male section if you know from your pater, from your paternity so my mother is from lagos lagos island and my father is from oyo state in nigeria which is the you know western part of nigeria so um he left and you know he lived in lagos he was brought up in lagos which is the city and his mother was very 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 rich very wealthy as a businesswoman you know uh, selling grocery you know wholesale grocery so he was you know he lived um, a comfortable life i'll say middle class you know higher upper middle class uh, uh, family so he didn't want us to i mean we were not raised up to up till age nine as princess i did not know i was a princess because we're living in lagos and living in lagos is like living in new york everyone you're just lost in a crowd you just won in in an ocean so we didn't we didn't grow up knowing our knowing it so when when he, my father came back from overseas he was living in in egypt and that's when we started learning that we're from a royal family in Ogbomosho. That's the name of the town, Ogbomosho. It's in the um, it's in the western part of Nigeria. And he said, if you if 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 you ride in, you travel from anywhere. You get to the town, and you say you are going to the family of Lawi Akorede. That anyone in town will take you there. That everyone knows us. I'm like, really? Imagine saying that when you get to, <laughs> to to the train station, everybody, you can just ask for my name and everybody will know who I am. Totally. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I can't, I couldn't imagine it too, because I live in Lagos where, every, you know, millions and billions of people. So one day I decided to go on an adventure alone at age 10 or 12. I traveled alone by myself to that time i wanted to experiment what he said and when i got there to the so it's like going from here to past dallas it's like going from houston to an hour away from dallas by myself meanwhile so when i got there and i did tell them i was going to the akorede family and they said oh really they, they got a car, they put me in a car, they took me there, they took me to my grandfather's house, you know, and the way I was treated, like, royalty arrived, I'm like, this is fun. <laughs> so, I, they, I could not imagine it, you know, so when I got there, everybody was like, oh, da, 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 da. oh uh, the daughter of uh, Muritala is my father, has arrived from Lagos. And so I developed a groupie of young children. They were all following me around. I became a celebrity. I was like, wow. So then when my father, when my grandfather would walk to the palace, everybody would be coming out of their houses to greet him. You know, I'm like, who is this guy? And everybody would look at me like, wow, princess, you know. So all the people from my family, people of my age, the, they they didn't do any their laundry they didn't do they didn't do house chores they didn't do anything that we did in lagos <laughs> you know so my cousins were living like princesses and princes you know their hands were so soft they had never done any <laughs> hard work you know so i was like this is fun so i stayed there i didn't want to go back to lagos because i was just you know i tasted what a what you know that type of life is you know being looked up as a you know as a princess and knowing that you are and it made me proud of my lineage you know i can i can only imagine i mean when when you start to think about um what what all is involved in that lifestyle mm -hmm. right but mm -hmm. but understanding that there is a a deeply rooted respect mm -hmm. like, like you said you, you know you would see okay these people look how they're responding to my grandfather mm -hmm. you know um 
And that is, you know, royalty, leadership, all of the qualities that that we're talking about. I love that you encouraged um, everybody to just, you know, seek out your your genetic makeup. Mm-hmm. Like, look at your ancestry mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we all have, we have, we must all have royalty. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I love that. you know, I've been following uh, some um, African Americans who returned home. And it's amazing. There are so many of them who have <clears throat> discovered their lineage. And those who didn't even discover their lineage, they've been accepted back. And they call them uh, Omowale, our child has returned. You know, if you Google some of them on YouTube, they, they, they are experiencing a fantastic journey in their lives, you know, reconnecting back to to africa and that's one of the things that i feel that we need to work more on in unity the african immigrants here in the united states and and other parts of europe and the african americans and the africans in the diaspora who were forcefully brought to united states a caribbean uh, i you know the caribbean uh, the british uh, empire if we could only if we can only what cooperate and unite africa will be unbelievably marvelous yeah yeah that, totally. that, that connection is what we need and cooperation and love and unity if I agree. if we can all work together if we can all work together it's it's going to be a beautiful world for everyone, we're not against right. you know anyone. It's not it's not going to be a racial uh, discrimination type of thing, but unity for, totally. for our own uh, success and progress. Totally, totally. I mean, and this is we've been talking about this in, in broader context with returning to home, Ghana. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the programs that are saying, "Hey, come home." You know, Mm -hmm. we need your innovation. We need your organization. We need your, you know, new village thought. Yes, ma'am. So this conversation is is getting bigger and bigger. And again, I can't wait. When I tell you, Princess, every day my prayer and the creator knows it's take me home at the right time. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. You know, because I know there's so much to see and experience. And everyone Mm -hmm. who's already gone. Mm-hmm. they've been like, oh, Tiff, you may not come back. And I believe them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe them mm-hmm. because it's so rich and mm-hmm. it's so beautiful. Um, but I love that even we're talking about that because the unity is very necessary. We have to start having very candid conversations about what we need mm-hmm. to do to stick together, mm-hmm. to imagine new futures. If we're talking about this legacy that we're that we, we want, we hope to leave for our children, yep. then unity and unity consciousness has to be front and center. You know, this, it can't, it shouldn't be about, you know, Africans versus African-Americans. Yes, it's, that's not, yeah, we can't, what, what can we do with that? <laughs> Nothing. We have to understand um, how relative the entire conversation mm-hmm. of inclusivity is. Mm-hmm. We're, we're all the same. Mm-hmm. We're all absolutely, the same. Absolutely. The same. Absolutely. So I love that. I love that. Okay. So. When you write, because I and I want, I'm piggybacking off of the royal story, right? Mm-hmm. The royal mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. When you write, um, as like Ola Rumbi's promise, there is there is some sprinkle of you know royalty and mm-hmm. you know that the culture of this village, and um, mm-hmm. I don't want to say cause and effect, but um, some of the proverbs, some of the the things that you do do versus you don't do. Mm. And when you don't respect, you know, the culture Mm -hmm. and when you don't, when you don't do the things that you're supposed to do, what what happens? happens? Like, how, how has your, your upbringing and that lifestyle, like affected your writing overall? Hmm. Uh, One of the things that, um, you know, as you asked that question that came to my mind is that my father, um, raised us not to be arrogant that's number one he also raised us to earn our name you know there was a time out let me tell you my father was very high in the in his um uh, 
position also as a as a diplomat and i traveled with him one time and the way that i saw people um you know put him on the pedestal he was the boss he was the this and that and i think it got to me as a child and i used to be um so proud of him however it got to me that i i i almost lost it so i used to talk so in 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 in, in the culture in the yoruba culture when you're talking to elders you cannot say me me and just you know like, so i used to talk to the elders like a me a me on my core day, me i the daughter of a core day, I, the daughter of Akurede, so they reported me. This man sat me down, clipped all my wings, and he said, you have not earned that. You have to earn it. You have to work hard. You have to get your education. You have to rise and do the right thing before you can earn to say a me, to say me, the daughter of Akurede. So he taught me to be humble, and he taught me that I was nothing until I become something. So, you know, it, it, when I traveled out of Nigeria, it made me realize the richness of my culture and to embrace it more. And one thing that um, African-Americans here do not realize is that uh, Africa, well, let me, let me limit it to Nigeria. Um, a lot of people are extremely westernized uh, at the detriment of our culture, you know, it is now that, you know, our culture is coming back. People are beginning to have the African pride again. Before, it used to be the British, you know, the Western, you know, that's what makes you. But now people are beginning to, to realize that an African culture and writing is, be, is become, is, is, I call it the Renaissance because there was a time that it was there. It was popular. It was you know, uh, it was pro uh, people were writing very well, um, and also, um, you know, uh, hand culture, sculptures, and stuff like that were um, on the rise. But then, you know, so it's ups and downs. So I wanted to bring the richness of that culture, you know, what, how you are supposed to greet your elders, um, how you're supposed to talk to them, your demeanors. And, um, and, and, you know, the, the, the culture is different from the Yoruba religion. So sometimes people mistake it and they think that you have to follow the Yoruba um, indigenous religion to, you know, to be, um, you know, like accepting of yourself. The culture belongs to everybody, no matter what your religion is. Culture is culture, whether you're Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, uh, Jew, whatever, uh, uh, traditional religion, religious practices. This is all uh, us. My dressing is not the the Orisha dressing. It is Yoruba dressing. So we all all of that. I want. So what I wanted to portray in my book is that the culture we have to embrace it and love it and use it and it, it makes us a better person it makes us better people you know and 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 the, the sweetness of you know relationships you know romantic relationships that uh many people may not be exposed to as you know nigerians yoruba you know culture the 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 uh, ancient yorubas they had their own ways of being romantic of being affectionate of being loving and you know what makes a romantic and successful marriage is there they the, the, and you know people generally we when people think of africa they think of polygamy oh a man with so many wives where is love in that you know you know but there are so many love stories you know and so that is one thing that I wanted to portray in Olurumbi, you know. And you know, I had I had a reader. <laughs> it said, but but I want my husband to be like Ayo. <laughs> you know, they say he's so sweet. You know, you know, and uh, I had, you know he's so sweet. He's a very good character. He's a very good husband, and 
things like that. Yeah, there are men like that. And it is being African, you know, doing those things. <laughs> yeah. So just the overall love, I mean, and, 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 and I know this, you know, about you. We are both what I what I like to call hopeful romantics, right? Not yes. hopeless. Yes. Um, because yes. that can actually happen. <laughs> you can fall, you know, madly in love and mm -hmm. continue that flame over time. So generally what I've witnessed and what I just heard you say, and I just want to make sure, mm -hmm. is just the overall portrayal of love for self, you know, the earning mm -hmm. of the self-righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. The love for family, that respect, and then, the, you know, that extended love to community. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what All the Room Beats Promise does, it does really well. Like it, it sheds light on mm -hmm. all of that. Yes. It does. I mean, and that's, who you mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. that really is who you are <laughs> so i love That's that it. i love that i, mm -hmm. I want to encourage everybody um it's a beautiful book it is it's, it is what we consider a chapter book mm -hmm. um and there are some incredible illustrations interspersed throughout there it is she's holding it up <laughs> when i tell you guys i, I worked on like she said some of the the pre-sale marketing mm -hmm. it's just a really well-written book i mean how many gosh i can't even remember i remember when we were doing the launch mm -hmm. we had like hundreds of orders like in those first like two yeah. two months yeah. yeah i mean it was yeah. just like yeah. everybody i mean it was just like wow princess this is these people are waiting you mm -hmm. know um and i see i saw on your website you have some new reviews and it's just a wonderful book. It's a wonderful book. Where can people get it though? On the website? Yes, it's it's uh, it's on my website, uh, which is uh, you have it there. Thank you, Princess Sherifat dot com is my name dot com. So I just put it there, Princess Sherifat dot com. And um, talking about the illustrator, you know, he is uh, his name is um, Akimboye Sukomi. He's a he's a Nigerian uh, artist. He's based in Nigeria currently, and he he's he's also on the social media. He's done wonderful work, and I love his work. You know, when I was researching, looking for an illustrator, I looked at a lot. You know, and I love mm -hmm. the details of his work. You know, like you know this part when uh, Ayo was playing with his daughter. You know, with the baby, yeah, mm -hmm. with the baby. So I just love his his work. He's 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 wonderful. So it's also on Amazon. It's on uh, all the ebook. Um, you know, uh, places. It's it's um, on Amazon on. Uh, um, Smash words is on King King um Barnes and Nobles. Barnes and Noble, okay. And also it's also on um uh, Apple Apple Books, you know. Okay, good. Right. Awesome. So it's yeah, there, and it's going to be on uh the your site. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I can't wait. Like as soon as you get that yes. uploaded, we're gonna add it to our bookshop so that people can purchase. Remember when you purchase titles from Imagery's bookshop, you also support independent book owners, independent bookstores. And that's a big deal now mm. more than ever because we're seeing the emergence of independent bookstores again. We need mm. to support each other as independent mm. authors. Mm -hmm. um, we need to support each other in that way. So if we can buy books online from mm -hmm. bookshop, Imagery's mm -hmm. bookshop, mm -hmm. you are also supporting an independent bookstore. And primarily, you have to think the way we have our bookshop set up, is we are supporting black owned mm. business mm -hmm. bookstores mm -hmm. yeah because we get to pick who we like for yes. those funds to go right. to so right. can't wait for her to give us the, the green light okay yeah, so you, you were talking about the illustrator he did the illustrations for the other um the other book what is the name of the other the, the, it's the one that's coming yes the this the sequel to this yes so the sequel to this is the accidental she Shiro, yeah. how, how would you pronounce it? She hero or Shiro? Shiro. Shiro. <laughs> so yeah, so he's uh, he's done the illustration for that. And the reason why I love the illustration is just to um, give people a, a you know a feel the art the artistic part of um, depicting the culture and the environment. You know, 
uh, the as 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 well as the the you know the physics of the characters in the environment. So uh, that one, it, this you know, you talk about this. I am so excited about the sequel because that's when the princess is going to blow out and okay, blossom, I'm, I'm and so, so much is going to happen that will tie it all together you know and uh the, the the this african princess so this is just the background to lay the background so everyone yeah. can know where where she's going to come out from you know so i am so excited about it because yeah. it's, it's just such a it's such a beautiful story Same i mean here. it has Thank it you. has everything in it that you know especially when we're talking about reading with our with our children mm -hmm. and those in our community mm -hmm. you know when we're talking about these very spiritual laws if you will and mm -hmm. these these cultural perceptions we want to give like a really good clear authentic mm -hmm. picture mm -hmm. you know just like you said you earn the name mm -hmm. you know um there are rites of passage that must mm -hmm. take place mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um no matter who you are Yes. You know, it's it's everybody has to do the work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's just beautiful. So I'm excited to see the the follow up. I can't I can't wait. And I know we talked about it offline, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to pressure you. But mm -hmm. do you have an anticipated date? <laughs> the pressure is coming from everywhere. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> yeah, you it, 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 the pressure is, is 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 high, even from my family. You know, my kids because they're very involved in editing and proofreading and all of that, so they are pressuring me everywhere. But we're working on it. Um, I I don't think it'll come out this year. Um, okay. if it will by December, you know, that's my target. You know, okay. by by the end of this year, hopefully it'll come out. But we'll keep you posted. You know, stay tuned. Um, something I wanted to mention about the, the you know, um, sharing the culture is yeah. the culture of storytelling. This is, yes, this please. is the, my passion to tell my story, for you to tell your story, for her to tell her story, for him to tell his story, right? So in the African uh, setting, usually there's a way that storytelling takes place and i depicted that in this book in the first one and so what i'm planning to do and this this the the, the setting of that was in the city so the next one is going to be the setting is going to be in the rural area <clears throat> under the moonlight you know under the 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 tree guava tree you know orange tree whatever tree that is in the compound and so how they tell the stories, I wanted to bring it to, you know, not only to United States and the, you know, and, and the, the Western world, but to Nigeria and other African countries, because we're losing a lot of those, those things. Everyone is on social media, you know, social media is good, but we also have to, um, keep our culture you know retain them and utilize them and because they enrich our lives so i wanted to teach how uh how interactive it is to tell stories hello ah, and the audience will be like hello ah, so there's engagement of the uh, of the story uh, narrator and the audience there's always you know interaction there and there's drumming there's always singing you know uh, I remember as a child, I used to, we, we would all ask whenever there's storytelling time, is there going to be a song? Is there going to be a song? And those songs, they are always in the stories and the songs, they are always messages, positive messages. Right. For us to, to learn to help us uh, grow uh, as a well-rounded and well-grounded uh, person. I'm so glad that, you know, when you when you when you host the events and you center storytelling, mm -hmm. that it's like you said, it's a full interactive exercise. Right. Because you do have to be immersed in the culture for you to really understand how personal it is and mm -hmm. how precious it is. So do you have and I, I don't I can't remember because it's been a while. Do mm -hmm. you have any of the videos like posted on YouTube or on mm -hmm. your Facebook channel? Mm hmm. For people to watch yes. and just get, get a taste of it. 
Yeah, on uh, on uh, YouTube, there's a lot of them on YouTube, okay. and it's uh, under my under my name, Sherifat Akorede, and there's another YouTube um, channel which is Princess Sherifat Akorede, Sherifat Akorede. Um, so there are uh, a number of um, you know events like that, and so. You can learn and you can teach your children and you can do storytelling with them using the same, uh, you know, uh, system. Awesome. Method. Okay, so I'm hoping I'm hoping Kalila got that so we can um, so we can get that out for sharing. Okay. Definitely. Um, well, everybody, I mean, storytelling is to me is always I would like to look at it as, as our birthright. When we talk about royalty, mm -hmm. it's how we have learned mm -hmm. since the beginning of our times, mm -hmm. right? Our families mm -hmm. pass down these beautiful stories, mm -hmm. and it's up to us to be the keeper um, and the teller of those. And so it's, it's critical that when we're talking about storytelling and the magic of stories, that we talk about them in, you know, for teaching purposes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mm -hmm. want to talk about next. Mm -hmm. well, you know, your your profession and how that all plays into, you know, some of the things you've experienced as being a social worker and the education piece mm -hmm. and how it all ties in. Mm -hmm. Like, what what do you... It, well, first of all, being a social worker is tough. It's tough. It's I'm a so calling. Glad. It is a it, calling. <laughs> listen, you know, I, I when I first moved here... Mm -hmm. I thought that that was what my calling was. Okay. I really did. And mm -hmm. I and I don't, I don't tell this story often, but I signed up to, um, that's why I moved to Houston, to okay. attend TSU to finish my undergrad in social work. Mm -hmm. And I remember actually being in like the first week of class in the sociology class, which I, I really enjoy. Mm. And I remember, um, you know, going through classes and something just, I don't know, it was just like, I don't think I'm cut out for this. I know mm -hmm. I love people. I know mm -hmm. I care. Mm -hmm. But this is like a 24-7 thing. Yeah. Like the caring is always on. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and you have to think, I had already read articles about, you know, the plight of a social worker and how, you know, it's, it's really an emotionally laborious mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're mm -hmm. someone who feels deeply, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then it may not be for you because you have to make logical decisions, yeah. you know, that could tug at your heartstrings and that could be difficult, you yes. know? <laughs> so I'm glad that I didn't get too deep in, which is why I love imagery so much because mm -hmm. it's my own social work project. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want you to talk to us about, you know, your social working background and how you see education be a part of, you know, your experiences through social work and mm -hmm. how that all blends into storytelling, what you think storytelling can really do, you know, to help the social condition of, you know, our communities. It's a, it's a, it's a mouthful, your question, but it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's absolutely vital, extremely you know important i am a i think i call myself a prevention person um in terms of the community so when i i i've i've worked in in my field i've worked in different settings i've worked in the prison all male prison i've worked you know in the children's um children's um health centers I've worked uh, with HIV, uh, AIDS uh, patients. Uh, I've worked with all the government, uh, you know, um, agencies doing social work. I've worked with families. And I, when I look back, I've worked with schools, with children in schools. And I just feel that if we had better control of the families, of the community if the messages that were that they were um given in storytelling in 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 the community helping to raise children together um there would be less people in the um, judicial system for for one thing you know in the schools if prevention prevention is so important 
if messages that children get in the social media in the schools in the environment were more positive and they had more positive role models i think there'd be less issues less problems in the world generally and uh in I, I, focusing on nigeria and in the united states let me just use uh, those two places as as examples because a lot of things that have been going wrong also in the homeland a lot you know so much uh that it's, it's saddening but when you when you when we were growing up to steal is like one of the the worst the worst crime you can ever commit not to we we're not even talking about murder or killing somebody to steal you know so um that is in the proverbs that you will hear in the stories you will hear in in people talking but these days it's not it's not there anymore you know so we're losing a lot of 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 those positive messages you said we should be the keepers i i that's the keyword that i you know just you know i got it keepers mm -hmm. and, and and tell us of of our stories mm -hmm. you know that all those stories there should be messages there are always positive messages 